This episode is sponsored by Kendo UI. Kendo UI allows you to build better apps faster. They have a comprehensive library ranging from data grids and charts to buttons and sliders. Plus, you can use their components as plain JavaScript as well as in Angular, React, and Vue. They have a large collection of customizable popular themes like Bootstrap and Material. Go check them out at javascriptjabber.com slash Kendo UI. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Views on View. My name is Chris Fritz from the View Core team. And today on our panel, we have Divya Sasidaran, Vue developer, speaker, and contributor. Hello. We also have Joe Eames, teacher and organizer of the Framework Summit Conference. Hey, everybody. And today our guest is Jen Looper. Hello. <laughs> Jen, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm a developer advocate at Progress, and um, the project that I'm most involved in is NativeScript, actually, which is a way to build mobile apps and the subset of NativeScript that I'm really passionate about is NativeScript View. So um, I thought we'd maybe talk a little bit about that today. Awesome. So uh, for those who might not be familiar, what exactly is NativeScript? Right. So NativeScript is, um, like I said, a way to build mobile apps using JavaScript. And um, it's a little similar to React Native in, in that React Native is a bridge and we're a, um, actually a runtime. So we are um, allowing J the JavaScript developer to build cross-platform um, native mobile apps using JavaScript. And the cool thing about NativeScript is that you can use Angular or no framework at all, or now this new view implementation. So you're not kind of tied to one framework. We have several flavors that you might enjoy. So, so NativeScript helps you build mobile apps, essentially, mobile apps. like with JavaScript. And, and you can do it with Vue and, and other languages and stuff, or other frameworks. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned, like, whereas React Native is more of a bridge, uh, NativeScript is more of a runtime. Like, what exactly does that mean? That is the that is the million dollar question. And it gets into the use of JavaScript threads. And I'm not um, actually... a fantastic explainer of this, but I like to think of NativeScript as um, a translator. It sort of uses the runtime to translate your JavaScript code into native code. So it's, um, it's compiling uh, once you hit build and it compiles down to your um, APK for Android or an, um, an app file, a regular um, iPhone app file for you when you're done. Oh, cool. Okay, so does that does that mean anything? Does that like have any changes for the way that I develop? Or is it just kind of like an under the hood implementation detail? Well, there's an under the hood implementation detail that basically um, abstracts away some of the complexity of building um, a mobile app. And one of the things NativeScript offers for you is um, the concept of modules. So we have about 70 uh, custom built modules that you can use, for example, like an action bar, like nobody wants to write an action bar for iOS and another one for Android. We just let you in XML write action bar as a tag, and that will create your native action bar for you. So we abstract away some of the nastiness of, of writing um, mobile apps. We have a component, um, a module for like the list, the list view that's, you know, easy to implement, action bar. Uh, and then we have a lot of plugins that the community has built as well that help abstract some of the even more complicated, weird things away. Like, um, like if you need a fingerprint reader or a barcode scanner, we have plugins for that sort of thing. So I think there's about 600 um, packages on NPM that um, allow you to um, create really something really custom for your mobile apps. Oh, wow. They just like take care of these common problems for you? Yeah, yeah. And some of the not so common ones as well. So it's, um, it's a nice community and they're very helpful in creating these kind of nice custom implementations that so you don't have to write everything twice. Oh, that's cool. So it's kind of like when I'm building a front end, um, you know, just on the web, you know, if I want some like really cool multi-select, you know, there are other libraries that have already like put together a multi-select component that I can just bring into my app and then style it how I want and stuff like that. Right. And, and that's it sounds what, like yeah. there's the same kind of thing with like mobile stuff. Like, you know, if you want a barcode reader, you know, you just bring that in. and Yeah, just bring it in as an NPM package and that works really well. And it's something that our company has been doing for, you know, forever. We have Kendo UI for exactly that sort of abstraction if you need a very beautiful grid, you know, you can use Kendo UI components and bring that in. So that's the, that's the plug for the web, <laughs> but I'm more on the, on the mobile side. So. Cool. All yeah. right. Yeah, go for it. Um, I was just curious. So how different is the user well, developer experience to work with native script? So let's say that I'm a typical view developer, right? I'm getting comfortable with view. I've built a few websites and all of a sudden I think, Oh, I got to do uh, something mobile. Right, I'm gonna. So I choose. I choose native script. How different is that experience of than what I'm used to with Vue? 
Yeah, it's a great question. I think that the um, the biggest pain point for every native script developer um, or any mobile developer actually who wants to build a native app is going to be that initial setup where you have to install um, you have to install native script or you know React Native or those sort of things. But you also need to install Android Studio and you also need Xcode. But you know, once you get all that stuff set up, then you know you can just go ahead and start using the CLI, the native script CLI, to um, to scaffold your app. And that we have a really nice uh, view CLI implementation for um, for the native script view package. So um, you can just do an. And um, I don't have the commands in front of me, but you can just um, use a, a native script view template that we've helped. Um, that we've created, and you can just you know use that to scaffold your your app right away. And then your experience developing is very similar to what um, a regular view developer would would go about doing. Um, the difference would be we also have these modules that you're going to use. You're going to use action bar and that sort of thing, lists. And a fun way to kind of get your feet wet without commitment <laughs> is to use the NativeScript playground. So if you go to play.nativescript.org, you can. Um, you can just, you know, drag and drop pieces onto your screen so that you can see how all the view um, bits and pieces fit together using NativeScript modules within a view environment. So that's really helpful. So what IDE am I using? Am I using my regular old IDE I've been getting used to? Yeah, for me, it's Visual Studio Code, for sure. Yeah, so that's, um, I'm kind of just parked there and I just keep on using that. Yeah, you don't have to mess around with like Android, Android Studio or, um, God forbid, Xcode. <laughs> <laughs> What about like the tie-ins with like something like Visual Studio, such a popular IDE right now? Is there a lot of um, tooling and uh, add-ins for it? Let's see. So um, for Visual Studio, as opposed to Visual Studio Code. Sorry, I meant VS Code, not VS Visual Code Studio. VS. No. <laughs> no. Uh, we're a somewhat young, um, uh, um, young package in, in, in the NativeScript view world. For NativeScript itself, we have some very nice um, VS Code snippets. Um, especially on the Angular side. Our Angular implementation is a little bit more mature than our Vue implementation, so we've got some sweet snippets that you can use that actually Nathan Walker, who's a great Angular community member, has built. Um, you can use those. Um, there's, um, there's a NativeScript um, CLI helper, I believe, for, uh, for VS Code. But we also have a, a thing that we custom built called Sidekick, and this is um, sort of a, a GUI that sits on top of the CLI. So when, you're, you, know, when you want to create an app, you can go ahead and just use NativeScript Sidekick, which is a desktop app, and just say, you know, create an app. I want it to be Angular. I want it to have a list. And, you know, bang, it's, it's ready for you and scaffold it out for you. And that's a really nice um, tooling, piece of tooling that we have. Now, we do not yet have the view implementation ready for Sidekick, but we've got everything else ready. We're, we're working on that. So Sidekick team is, is rocking and rolling. And, um, and that's a great desktop app that you might use. That we'll definitely be using in the future. That's really cool. So not zero to 60, but what's like the timeline for zero to 30? I've been doing Vue, I'm very comfortable with Vue. Now I want to do some Android or some, you know, mobile, right? Yeah. How long until I have a fairly okay, a, a playground sort of type app up and running? Yeah, I think um, it's, a, it's an interesting um, thing to watch uh, because I see a lot of people hopping into our native script Slack Vue channel and with exactly that situation, they're, they're comfortable with Vue, they're experienced web Vue developers and they're like, oh my gosh, where do I get started? So fortunately, we have um, the community member who built native script Vue has also built a beautiful website called native script vieworg You can visit that and then you can have some, some kind of getting started um, tips and tricks. And he's always available with us on Slack to help you get over the, to the rough parts. Currently, I think what we really need are tutorials. So we're working on that actively. And um, I think from zero to 60, I think it'll take you a couple couple weeks probably to get yourself a, a mobile app that you are relatively proud of. Um, but if you just want to test, uh, you can go ahead and jump into the playground and you'll have an app running on device. Um, I teach a little workshop and I have women, pe people who are, um, who are building a mobile app within 20 minutes. Um, it's actually a, a, a little app that lists dogs from the dog um, CEO API. So they just bring in little pictures of dogs and then click next, next dog, next dog. And it is very the, simple. The dog oh, beautiful. CEO API. Oh, yeah, this is a good API. <laughs> so, so why not the cat API? So there is a cat API, but it's it's done in... Um, yeah, I, I know. I wrote the Ruby wrapper for it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're waiting for the JSON implementation. We need the JSON. <laughs> Seriously? Sounds like a chance for a contribution. Chris, yeah, you are such a prolific programmer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you'd worked on some of the most important projects on the web. Oh, yeah. That is by far my most important project, I think. You know, like on my 
you know, when I'm on my deathbed, that's what I'll think back on. It's like, <laughs> at least I brought a lot more cats to people that maybe right. you wouldn't have had cats. It's very important, I think. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a highlight in your obituary. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so so it sounds like, you know, to, to summarize some of the stuff that we were just talking about, it sounds like to develop a native script, you know, it's a lot like, you know, you're, you're developing an HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, except you can't use like maybe all the CSS. And uh, with the HTML, like you're using different elements because it's you know, a different target. Mm-hmm. And then for the JavaScript, you know, you can use like all the normal JavaScript, except instead of the, the browser API, you have a different API that native script gives you to hook into uh, whatever the mobile platform is, like whether it's on iOS or Android or no matter what, like what version of Android, it just like standardizes it so that if you want to like hook into, you know, the camera or something like that, you just call the same thing, no matter what kind of device you're on. Yeah. Then you would use our camera module and that will help abstract away all the, all the mess between, um, between Android and iOS the usage of the camera. So yeah, we've got all these, you know, sort of ready to plug and play. And um, I think the biggest difference between view and view and native script view would be the um, the templating, the templates, because the, the markup is really considerably different. Like I'm kind of normally using Viewtify for a website, you know, and you just have these beautiful divs and all this good stuff. Um, you just can't do that because we're, there's no DOM in native script. This is a native mobile app, so there's no um, manipulation of the DOM. So you have to use modules, and you're going to be using stack layout, grid layout, um, List view, uh, there's some custom list views that have like swipe and swipe to delete. You know, when you need that native experience, you're going to need a little bit different markup. And the CSS, uh, again, like we can't use things like uh, view bootstrap or beautify, but um, we have a subset of CSS, a pretty decent subset of CSS that is, that's available to you. And um, it, it, it ends up looking pretty good. So you can, you can get a beautiful looking app um, just with our subset of CSS. It looks good. <laughs> Does um, does native script offer the ability for you to inspect elements as you're working through them? Yeah, in our debugger, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you can use uh, the Chrome debug tools with your native script app. Um, the, there's a t- the, 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 t- the CLI is TNS, so you type TNS debug iOS, um, and then it'll open up the Chrome Dev tools, and you can start inspecting. It's actually a little surreal because it's a native mobile app, but you're using Chrome Dev tools to kind of yeah. you know. It, it's just a very it's a very strange. <laughs> Strange <laughs> thing, but it does work. So, um, so you can kind of see what's going on. So, is it? Um, it, it I'm guessing that it doesn't work with the View Dev Tools at the moment because that's like yet. separate. Okay. And Chris and, I, Chris and I, we had this discussion because I think that would be a big win if we could make it work with View Dev Tools. And it seems like there's there's a few blockers, but they're not huge. So, it'd be something that I think that would be a really great thing. That would be like a great. Oh, completely. Community. Yeah, it, I think it would help. Like what Joe was saying, it'll help people who have not had a lot of experience with native yeah. just it would click because then you're essentially working with like a dom like structure yeah it's been very interesting for me i'm coming from the the very birth of the angular implementation of native script so we went through all the rcs and all the all the way up to six and it's kind of like everyone's learning angular at the same time that they're learning native scripts it's a very different feel now i've got experienced view devs and i'm catching up with them you know trying to trying to trying to learn view but they're coming from a different a different world and they're coming into native script and like what yeah what? completely it's a very different uh, yeah. experience and de- developer experience. Yeah. So I would think that, you know, if we, if there would be a, a really nice way to just bolt on a mobile app to your website, like for me, that's kind of the next frontier. If there was a command that we could say, um, you know, um, view add mobile and then just like, just like use the, the view CLI to pop in a nice mobile app, that would be really sweet. Cause then you can have some great code sharing. And yeah. we'd like to talk about code sharing. It's, it's a very tricky thing to get right. Um, we have it with Angular and NativeScript, but uh, and we also have a template coming along with Vue, and we'll be having a webinar um, in the middle of June about this. So we're kind of, it's kind of a proof of concept, and we're working on it. But it's interesting with code sharing because people say they want it, and then they start building it, and they're like, oh, my Lord, this is, this is terrible. <laughs> it gets so complicated. So we'll, we'll get there, hopefully. Yeah. I want something light, easy, and simple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea if this would be feasible, but it'd be really cool if there were some kind of like uh, Vue CLI 3 plugin, because Vue CLI 3 has a plugin system yes. where you could just add like a native script plugin and it would, uh, I guess, replace like all of the browser stuff with native script. I, I don't know if that would work at all. I, I don't know. We'll yeah. have to, we'd have to look into that, but yeah, that'd be Igor, pretty cool. Yeah, our community member, Igor Angelovich, is a wonderful Vue developer and a great community member in general. He's the guy who's really the 
the builder, you know, like, like Evan, you know, <laughs> we've got our Igor. <laughs> um, and he is, um, he, I think he's looking very carefully at that plugin uh, ecosystem and seeing what we can do to leverage it. Cause when three comes out, then, you know, jumping on it properly would be really critical. Awesome. And I think uh, we'll have both you and Igor to answer some like questions from the community about right. native script and view at view contributor days on June 6, which people can register for, although it might be by the time this comes out, it might be too late. We'll see. <laughs> oh, close. Okay. I, do, do you have any questions about or anybody else like Divya, Joe, do you have any questions about native script? Otherwise I have some, some deep questions that I'd like to ask Jen about a different okay. topic. Well, um, what about testing with native script? Testing, testing. <laughs> this has come up a couple of times, but not as often as it should. And um, it's never as awesome, as often as it should. It's like true. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of the last time somebody brought this up on the channel. Right now, people are just trying to get their apps, you know, working and into the wild. But in terms of testing, I think... I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver on that, but I feel like we're trying to stick closely to the current view testing ecosystem, um, kind of like what we did with the Angular ecosystem. Um, so yeah, I don't have a great answer on that one, which is bad, and I, I will remedy that. <laughs> Any other really good learning resources for native script besides the stuff you've already mentioned? Yeah, um, we are working with several community members to create tutorials. Um, we have a website called nativescripting.com, and our community member is Alex Ziskin. He's one of our developer experts. He's going to be rolling out uh, video content on Native Script View. I believe Nick Raboy is writing, uh, you know, print or article tutorials. Kind of depends on how you like to learn. And then I think Paul Halliday as well who does really nice uh, tutorials on all sorts of things. He'll be doing videos. Um, I'm writing, I have a site called nativescriptsnacks.com, which is little snippets and videos um, of ways that you can, you know, solve little pain points. And I have a segment of that site, which is called Snack Labs, which is ripped off of Google Code Labs, <laughs> uses Polymer and everything. Um, and I have a tutorial on there called Clean Weather. It's a weather app. It badly needs updating and I'm working on that. <laughs> so that's a resource. And... Finally, I'm, we have a, a way of teaching NativeScript with the groceries tutorial. So we have that with regular NativeScript, Angular NativeScript, and I'm going to be working with the community to roll that out for NativeScript view. Um, that's, that's a really, I think, the best way to learn. Um, so we are working internally and with the community to create good tutorials. This is a real pain point, and um, we're trying to fix it. Because it's like, yeah, I want to learn, but what, how, <laughs> I really think the the workshop material that you 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 and um, your team at Vivexens have come up with is amazing. Like, I I actually was because I was there for the first I think it was the first workshop that you did at ViewCon. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, and so um, that was like super straightforward because we got I think everyone at the table got their app running within like fifteen minutes. Yeah, most yeah. people knew what they were doing, and they're like, oh, we just need to know how to organize the files and fol folders. Yeah. Um, and the organization structure, once you get that, you're pretty much writing a view app. So Yeah, for sure. And that um, that's the beauty of the native script playground because it it takes away the nightmare that is that is Xcode and Android Studio. And you're just running your app in um, in a companion app on device. So all you have to do is download these two companion apps and then use the playground and it'll just flash your code onto their device and it's just a super a super fast way of learning. Um, that, that was a really nice kind of test for me to see how complete noobs to mobile development could come and just learn immediately. So um, yeah, that's, that's one of our mini workshops and I'll be doing that next week at Progress Next, which is the next one. Can uh, I jump in here? Since we've been on the call and you mentioned the uh, native script, script playground, what was it, 10 minutes ago? Yeah. About 10 minutes ago. I jumped on and threw together the simplest stupid thing where you press a button and then a message shows up. But literally did it like two minutes. This is like the very first time I've done anything truly on mobile in my life. And yes. just 10 minutes in using Vue. Super awesome. I'm so excited. Very cool. Yeah. What, what a testimonial. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a great resource. And we've, we're kind of moving our tutorials into the playground. 
um, because it's easy to have this like panel and then you can kind of be learning and building and learning and building. The trick is the playground does not yet support SFCs. So when, and I was just talking to the team today, we're going to hopefully for the next release um, be able to offer something like that. Cause I think, I think we can't do much with Vue until we have the, the single file components. Um, well, I just, I love the fact that I go in there and I play with something and I just click, you know, there's kind of this little mini editor in the browser. I click, you know, preview and my phone automatically refreshes and updates and then has a new uh, UI to it. Just for those of you who are panelists, the whoever's listening can't see, but I'm going to show you. Look at my awesome UI. Can you see it? <laughs> oh, wow. It's very impressive. Yeah, I can see text yep. in a button and actually something that, that looks like a native like top bar and everything. Yeah. Yep. So you just refresh. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I refreshed it. Hold on. <laughs> so I'm going to show you. Look at look at look at how cool this is. Are you watching? So there's the button. Is the button? Is it showing up? There's the button. And yeah, if yeah. I press the button, <gasps> the message shows oh, up. <laughs> yeah. He pressed the button, and then it says hi there. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of one of the like first things that you learn when you're like doing like any kind of programming. You like you you have the user do something, and then something happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's very empowering. It's it, it's always surprises me. But if you go to the Vuvex Vuvexin's Twitter account, uh, our header is an image of one of our one of the ladies at um, UUS who who is like has her app here, has the playground here, and the playground team is like, yes, you know. That's <laughs> 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 so nice. Yeah, I think it probably helps a lot that you're a former former educator, former language teacher. It helps it, it, a little bit, I would think. But um, I, I, I think that just the pleasure of making students feel empowered is, I think that speaks to almost everybody, especially folks in DevRel or folks who are dealing a lot with the community. Yeah, and then I, I think you, you also built like a language learning app. Yeah. Yeah, I've rebuilt it since since the last conference. <laughs> so there's a V2. Um, wow, really? J just since ViewConf? Yeah, yeah. So um, since we had ViewConf, we've really solidified our Vue CLI um, template. And it's really a lot easier and cleaner. So I have, it's an app called Elocute. And it is for um, language teachers to help their students um, perfect their accents or for uh, like an ESL teacher to help um, a student speak a little bit more clearly. So there's a web app where the teacher is inputting um, texts with a particular language tag. And the student picks those up out of the classrooms and speaks into his or her phone and is given a score according to the um, closeness of the teacher's written text to your spoken utterance. So there's a little, there's a little um, algorithm running behind giving you a percentage of correct, um, which is nice. And I built it with an older Webpack template for the conference. And since then, we've had um, a lot of evolution. So I rebuilt it using the Vue CLI um, template, and it's it's a lot cleaner. So if you're going to look at that GitHub repo, it's JLooper, Elecute. Look at the mobile V2 <laughs> if you're looking for, for info. And it's also, that's got a nice Firebase integration. So that's one of our most mature plugins. Um, Eddie Ver Verbruchen, who did this Firebase plugin, he just integrated MLKit, if you followed Google I.O., um, it's got a beautiful ML kit integration, so you can have machine learning, you know, in your view app, and it's really exciting. So that's my next demo. <laughs> it's going to be great. Cool, cool. And it, I think the the talks that you gave, like at ViewConf and like other NativeScript talks, are also available online if people want to see those. I think so. Um, so I imagine if you just message. search for like Gen Looper NativeScript View, yeah, like you'll be, be able there. to find stuff. Yeah. Um, I should also update my website. Um, you reminded me. I have a playlist on... You've got two weeks. Okay. I'm going to hurry up. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll get my playlist uh, reordered so you can, you can catch all those talks. But um, yeah, so I'm working on a new talk though. Um, new demo, new talk, machine learning, Vue.js, NativeScript Vue is going to be really interesting. Ooh. Kind of like is there anything that you're willing to share about it now or are you just going <laughs> to leave us, leave us hanging? Well, have you ever seen that really dumb show on TV called Beat Shazam? <laughs> no, I've never heard of this, but I am intensely curious now. <laughs> Beat Shazam? Beat Shazam? Anything to do with superheroes, because I'm familiar with Shazam. Shazam Shaz is Isn't that that movie with like Shaquille O'Neal? Oh, maybe. From the 90s? It's a music where he's a genie? <laughs> so Are you talking about Shaz the movie Shazam? Yeah, that, isn't that what Shazam is? Well, Isn't there's that, that, but it's also something that like listens to music and it tells it. you. Yes, it's a mobile app. Yeah. Shazam yeah. is a very popular. We all have a different idea of what Shazam is. <laughs> Shazam is like the phrase where the um, superhero uh, says. <laughs> I, I can't even remember this. It sounds like an app. Sounds like Shazam. It's whatever you want it to be. It is. It's whatever you want it to be. It's just a fun sound. 
Okay, so what is it? What is Beach Shazam? Beach Shazam. So, uh, Beach <laughs> Shazam. There you go. You got it right. So what it is, is it's, um, I can't, the, there's a relatively famous host and he gets a panel of, of players and he plays a little clip of music and then the, the algorithm, which is Shazam, which is an app, sees if it can identify it faster than the human who is identifying the music. So it's like a little clip of some pop tune, which can identify it faster than the, the machine or you, the human listener. So I'm doing the same with images. I think it's not going to go well for the humans, but um, I'm going to be feeding it confusing images and seeing and create a little game show to see if the machine will pick it up faster than the humans. So we'll see. I I think with image recognition, we better get cranking because the the machines are doing very well. (laughs) Oh, wow. Do you know, like, when's the first time you're giving this talk? The first time is possibly going to be Paris road trip if I can get it ready. But um, I'm pretty sure... UJS road trip? Yeah. Yeah, UJS road trip. Um, But I'm hoping to do um, something more full-fledged at... um, uh, there's a conference called Vox Days in Thessaloniki in Greece. So I'm pretty happy because I love Greece. And this is a really cool conference. So Vox Days, and that's in uh, November. So I'll Vox be in, days in November. Okay, cool. So I'll be in Bulgaria at DevReach, uh, which is our big conference at Telerik. And then I'll just run down to Greece over the weekend and give a talk. It should be really fun. I'll be very, very much looking forward to that. Yes. <laughs> Even in November, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> It should be great. At the end, we can we can do like a survey of like what Shazam means to you. <laughs> yeah, Shazam. I think you're right about Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> I think there was something going on there. <laughs> I think I think it says something that my reference, like my like cultural touch point for Shazam, was older than anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> No, Not I think, that I'm necessarily I think, the oldest, just the I most think, out of touch with the world, I think. <laughs> I think the Shaquille O'Neal thing was Kazam, not Shazam. Oh, really? Oh, oh. Was it Kazam? You're yeah. right. Oh, okay. But his name, but it's Shaq. Why would it be Kazam? I have no idea. If it's Shaq. <laughs> Shaq Shazam? I what? thought, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But I think it's cool we that are. they built a game show around machine learning when you think about it. That's, cool. that's wild. That is pretty cool. But it sounds like a, a game show that I will probably lose, except you're messing with the machines. You're messing with their minds. Yeah, I don't know how people do it. I'm not great at identifying music clips. Um, it's something that's really popular in the on the radio stations. You're supposed to call in and identify things. So I'm just like, but images. I have a whole suite of confusing images, like the, the image of the dog and the mop and the kitten and the caramel parrot versus guacamole so i've got a whole bunch of these so you just have a folder on your computer I called do. confusing images <laughs> Confusing images. i have a con- yeah confusing and if images. anyone like looks over your shoulder it's like what is she why what <laughs> it's like the it's like the yanny and laurel of images yeah oh my gosh i just i just learned about that yesterday uh my wife told me about it and by the way like i don't know who her who hears yanny but that's i hear yanny. <laughs> i hear laurel oh no oh, oh Debbie. no <laughs> I, so uh, <laughs> something that I've noticed is that the older people that I've talked to, like people who are over 25, maybe <laughs> seem to hear Laurel and uh, people who are maybe like in their, you know, mid twenties or, you know, younger, um, tend to hear Yanni. Okay. Like, I wonder if it's maybe like our, our hearing is damaged. <laughs> yeah. I hear Yanni though. You hear Yanni? Yeah. Well, maybe you protect your ears better than I did. Uh, uh, I don't know. Or maybe my theory is just nonsense. How they they said if you play with the different levels of bass that that determines what you hear. Yeah. So if I if I pull out my my Walkman and turn on right. bass boost. Yes, then yes. I might hear Yanni. <laughs> Why don't we have that but, anymore? Well, because your your battery only lasts for 10 minutes once you turn on bass boost. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't bass boost. It was uh stabilized anyway. Now I'm really doing myself. On the New York Times they've got um this sound clip and then they've got the slider and you're supposed to like, they're getting data from us. You're supposed to stop when you hear one or the other, when you really? switch from Yanni to Laurel and then submit. So they're getting the data of who's hearing what it's really odd. Interesting. I, what are they doing with this data? I have no earthly idea. Is it like for <laughs> voice recognition or maybe, I don't know. You know, somebody's going to do something nefarious with it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's interesting. But anyway, <laughs> So one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you about today is, you know, as we, we've touched on a little bit already, you lead a group called View Vixens with some other foxy people. Yes. 
Yes, View Vixens is 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 my runaway success that I never expected to be a runaway hit. Um, and but I could not have done it without accidentally connecting with the wonderful lady in Ukraine, um, Natalia Tepluhina. And um, she just kind of raised her hand on Twitter and said, this is cool. Can I help? And she's obviously a really great view developer. And so she just sort of took over creating a lot of the workshop content and um, what, what a pleasure. So, but to, to roll back a little bit, I just want to make sure that she gets a huge cred, huge shout out because she's, been, I could not have done this without her. Um, but just to roll back um, to what View of Vixens is, is it's an initiative a little bit like uh, NG Girls, um, actually inspired strongly by NG Girls, which was also inspired by Django Girls. So a lot of these communities have groups that are sort of um, trying to get new people and new faces and new voices into the community by means of free workshops that are offered in conferences. So that's kind of the base model that we chose. We'll go to these conferences, we'll gather um, specifically groups of women and people who identify as women, make this sort of safe space for them, and just throw really fun free workshops. And we had a big hit at View US, which has made a lot of noise and created a lot of disruption. <laughs> and it was, it was a blast. Um, yeah, out of all the tables... You like the the view vixen table definitely seemed like they were having the most fun. Yeah, um, at all and times. Was, and and it was and I didn't expect that to happen, but they they stayed together for the whole conference, and they stayed at that table because when I got up to speak later in the day, all of a sudden there's like the screaming section over there, <laughs> and it was amazing. So what a great community that just kind of organically came together. Um, but at this point. We're offering workshops all over the place. We just got accepted to Node.js Interactive. So I'll be in Vancouver. Uh, we'll be at We Rise, Progress Next, um, Connect Tech. Um, there's a, if you go to viewvixens.org, you'll see all our upcoming, what we call a skulk, because a group of foxes is called a skulk. And um, that's, that's where we're going to be doing our on-site workshops. But I've also had pings from people who are asking us to take care of their diversity initiatives to sort of help out with organizing, you know, ticket giveaways and freebies and this sort of thing. We did this for um, View US, actually. So we were kind of, um, I just basically put up a form and said, look, if you're interested in a diversity ticket, enter here. We had 55 entrants for like five free tickets, which is incredible. Um, so that's kind of another thing that we do. Um, we do mini workshops, full day workshops on site, and then we do these kind of diversity initiatives. Um, and it's just a great way um, to get together, to kind of learn together. And we're trying to give um, the best quality workshop experience that we can for these folks. But more importantly, we want people to feel empowered, that they want to come away and, and feel that they belong. And that's more important than anything else. So I think it's really, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I have yet to do a full day workshop, but, you know, we've got great content for it. So hopefully it'll go awesome. And the workshops are structured in six parts. So there's five um, web pieces that are done in Code Sandbox. And then the chapter six is uh, the mobile piece. So we just build, well, what we're going to build is Tinder for dogs. So there's a, there's a dog theme going on in our workshops, as you can tell. Um, I'm working on swiping cards. Um, on, on mobile. So that'll be our mobile piece. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> you, can, you can look forward to those cat PR soon. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yes, definitely. Dog Need seeking cat, cat seeking. Uh, <laughs> yep. If I had an API, well, actually, you can do that with a pet finder API. <laughs> yeah, we need some. We need some <laughs> I didn't know about the pet finder stuff. API. That's a good one. It's more complicated than the dog CEO API, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. I mean, uh, I've, we're going to have to talk about, we're going to have to have a conversation about animal APIs later. Yeah, I, I have built Twitter for cats. So um, because it's nefarious that that cats are on Twitter, and there's a lot of them. So I, I created Yowler. So there's a lot of weird, weird. You know, my, my cat is on Twitter. This episode is sponsored by DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is the hosting provider I use for DevChat.tv. I also use it for my applications that manage the RSS feeds, scheduling, and sponsorships involved in delivering these shows. DigitalOcean is easy to use, has data centers all over the world, and provides terrific services including server hosting and object storage for delivering your web applications and assets quickly and easily. I use DigitalOcean because I love their interface. I get SSD storage for my servers, and their support replies quickly. So go check them out at DigitalOcean.com. I do not know how. I did not set up this account. <laughs> My wife did not set up this account. Really? Yeah. So he, he's on Twitter he, at, um, I think, MacGyver Fritz. His name is MacGyver. Oh my gosh. So you can follow him. He doesn't have a lot of followers, but he has some. Well, Nick, Nick Script Cat will follow. Will follow. And there are some people he follows. <laughs> Good heavens. It's, it's a little terrifying. He doesn't yeah. tweet a lot. He's mostly, you know, he mostly just likes to watch other people's content. Yeah. 
<laughs> the amount of cats on Instagram, it's unbelievable. A lot of good stuff out there. I- important and life-changing stuff. You know? <laughs> MacGyver Fritz now has one more follower. Okay. Oh, excellent. He'll, he'll be, I mean, he already has a huge ego. So, I, I mean, I, I don't think <laughs> tell him unless I <laughs> Don't they all? Yeah. They just like, walk around. He probably has more followers than me. <laughs> probably have their own, like, crowdsourced funding and all sorts of good stuff for extra food, you know? <laughs> He's definitely financially secure. For sure. Uh, so something that I am curious about for people who like identify as women and they're kind of interested in finding out more about like, okay, what, what exactly like do you do? You know, maybe there's not anything specific, you know, like they're not looking for a scholarship or anything or, you know, they're not looking to, you know, sign up for a workshop right away, but they just kind of want to, you know, like get to know like the community and what's available and stuff like that. How, where would they start? Yeah, so go to viewvixens.org, all one word, uh, viewvixens.org, and um, there's some links at the very bottom, and you can click on the icon for Slack and join our Slack group, which is actually a lot of fun. We have a very, very supportive and um, exuberant crowd on Slack. It's it's interesting because a lot of them came from VUUS, so I, I think what's going to happen is from each conference, we're going to get more and more people. Um, uh, the VIEW road trip in Barcelona is going to be bringing in people as well. Um, that is a great community just to kind of get your feet wet, see how, it, see how it feels to you. If it feels nice, um, then consider, you know, engaging further. I have a newsletter that I publish at the end of each month. I have to be diligent about this because newsletters take a while, but um, it's, it's kind of light reading. It's not a huge newsletter, but it kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing, any uh, new sponsors we have, celebrations. We do have a um, Patreon. I never know if I'm pronouncing that right, but. Wait, how did you just pronounce it? Patreon, is that wrong? <laughs> I like yeah. that pronunciation. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. What is this thing? It's, it's, it's money. <laughs> Maybe it's because you used Patreon. to be a French teacher. Are you, is it, you tra- sort of trying to do like Patreon? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like it's got an E in there. And, and I know we have patrons, but the website's called. I, so, yeah, this is one of those things like, <laughs> like when do you ever say it out loud? So, I, I usually say Patreon. Oh. No, but, it's Patreon. Not no, you know what? I, I listen to a lot of podcasts that do Patreons, and I think they all okay. pronounce it Patreon. So, Patreon. Okay, all right. it's, def- it's definitely it's definitely pronounced GIF. <laughs> no, I, but I, no, you know what? I think maybe people in the UK do say Patreon. Patreon. Maybe that's the thing. But as they put they put it in the in their boot when they go up the lift to their flat. Like they say, <laughs> they say patriotic instead of Patreon. <laughs> right patriotic yeah so I, I think that makes sense but anyway t- i think maybe P- patreon or patreon are the two most common maybe well so anyway you have a patreon <laughs> um, but anyway yes so if you um have any desire to support us financially that would be awesome every single dime is going into uh, our scholarship fund that is one thing i didn't mention that we also do um because people started throwing money at us and i was like oh my gosh we need to do something good with this so what i found with um the um, the work that we did with View US conference, we had so many people who would love to get to the conference, and obviously the traveling and the and that housing in New Orleans is pretty it's pretty rough. And if we could just offer little scholarships just to take the edge off of some of the some of the financial hardship that people experience, then we can get even more interesting people into these conferences. So that's where the Patreon money is going. <laughs> and um, we have a shop, same same story. Um, but the most important thing would be to join our Slack because that's where you're going to meet, meet the most people. And um, we're trying to help people in their careers, help beginners, help mid-range career people get on stage. Um, my, my colleague, Natalia, she, because of her work with View Vixen, she's just got a promotion. So it happens, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's great to see. I love, I love to see people just rising in their career and um, hopefully, hopefully um, making, making paper, as we say. <laughs> that's fantastic. Okay. I've actually met one. Um, I bumped into one of the ladies who was on the view, who got like a view vixen stipend to attend ViewCon. Cool. Um, which is like a very funny. We like bumped into each other at the airport, and, yeah. and we were like, "Oh, we're both going to conferences," but we like didn't bother talking about what conference. <laughs> and she yeah. was she was absolutely wonderful, and That's terrific. it's like if anything, she was like, "I would never have been able to come," and you know, she's very you know at, at pretty much at a range where she's she's like she's getting better and becoming more senior in her career and this was like a really good opportunity and i'm so glad that music Um, has the bandwidth to do this 
That's really good. Um, yeah, I love to see um, the friendships that are being made because um, that's what's happening. I mean, we're getting some pushback, you know, which is to be expected, but it's more important to see the, the connections that people are making and the, the solid friendships. Um, yeah. We have a new chapter in Argentina with Super Diana, who is amazing. <laughs> and um, they're just crushing it down in Argentina. So View Vixens Argentina is hitting it hard. I think Brazil is ramping up. I just got a note today from a guy in Oslo. Um, there's a lot of interest, and I think we just we hit, I hit it just at the right time. Um, so that just kind of worked out really well. <laughs> Yeah, it, surprisingly, there's always s- some pushback for like d- diversity movements. Like, yeah. you know, it, w- when I try to help out like underrepresented groups, like be better represented at conferences, you know, and, and help them like craft proposals and stuff like that. I get lots of people reaching out to me saying like, I am, so I, I'm not in an underrepresented group, but I am personally underrepresented at, at many conferences. Whoa, <laughs> I have to explain that, that doesn't count. I understand you'd like to be at more conferences, but it's <laughs> not something I'm concerned with, really. I mean, I got to hand it to them for chutzpah, you know? Right. I know, really. I, I have to, it's like, wow, that's some confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've gotten a few of those. Yeah. People, for the most part, are really cool, but some people just don't yeah. get it. I think one thing that, that I didn't expect is our name has attracted a certain amount of, of um, surprise. <laughs> um, we're not girls because I'm not a girl, and I wanted to be more trans-friendly. Um, but most programs like this are like Django Girls, NG Girls, Rails, Rails used to be Rails Girls, or and then I think they changed to Rails Bridge or Pi Ladies. So I just wanted to get away from that naming convention and become a little more edgy, and um, that has some ramifications. But we're we're cool. We're cool with that. <laughs> it also sounds like a fantastic derby team if you ever create one. Ah, well, if I do, I want it's, Super it's Diana and Natalia on my team. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll have to come up with derby names. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think the most fun part. Well, um, um, our, our native script colleagues in Bulgaria created a line of beers <laughs> for all of us. Um, and we all had our own label. So I am the vixen, apparently. So that's my, that could be my roller derby um, ID, and like with a hat with ears or something. You know? nice. <laughs> yeah, it's good Excellent. fun. Yeah. And so for, for people who want to support the work that you're doing. And let's say, you know, they, they don't have a lot of money. You know, I definitely recommend for anyone who like has ever complained about like, oh man, I, I wish like I, you know, there was like more diversity and I wasn't just seeing like the same kind of person like all the time everywhere. And I wasn't working with the same kind of person all the time. If you ever complain about that, definitely check out the View Vixen Patreon. <laughs> uh, but let's say, you know, yeah. people are at a place where they, they can't give a lot of money right now. Yeah, totally fine. Yeah. How else can they support you? I'm actually on the lookout for strong male allies. Um, I've had some invective thrown my way um, on social media, and it would be cool if people would kind of raise their hand and say that's not cool. So that would be that would be something I would really appreciate. And um, for example, um, One Minute JS. I don't know who's behind this account, but he's a great guy, and um, he's he's the guy who's doing um, the walkthrough of the View code base one line at a time. It's called One Minute JS. Um, he's a great ally. He's just like raising his hand and um, and speaking out, and that's really really helpful. So that's what that's like relatively easy, I think, to do. Certainly cost free. Um, in terms of money, um, and that would be really great. Um, or if um, you don't want to raise your head on social media, which can be risky, um, you could take a look at our GitHub repo, take a look at our workshops. So it's just few vixens on GitHub and see if there's anything that, you know, we could add to it and anything that we could do to make them better, walk through them, run through them, see if they make sense. Um, I have a colleague, Rob Cresswell, who's an, an ally in uh, London. I met with him when I was in London and he's, um, he looked, took a look at our workshops and he said, you know, I don't think this is super beginner friendly. You're going to just like jump in. So he's going to create a kind of a warm up at the top to kind of work on getting comfortable with code sandbox, that kind of thing. So all of those helpful activities are much appreciated. Those are really great. Yeah, Rob's great. He actually uh, hosted me at his apartment for free like, oh. when I was traveling one time. Yeah, it, was, it was great. It was great. Yeah, he does. I think he's involved in the View Bootstrap. Um, uh, contributor group, uh, which is actually our website is Cube Bootstrap, so that's cool. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I think those are all the questions that I can think of 
for Jen. Uh, is there, Divya, Joe, do you have anything else that is on your mind that you're curious about? No, that's it for me. Cool. All right. Then, Jen, I would love to hear, is there anything else that you'd like to plug, you'd like people to know about, you know, stuff that's happening soon or something that you're working on that you're excited about, anything like that? Um, I would just mention that um, we're having a webinar on code sharing specifically with NativeScript and the web. So not necessarily just with Vue, but also with Angular. Um, that's coming up in mid-June. If you go to nativescript.org, um, those are all free webinars and you can just hop on. My colleague, Sebastian, who's really, really great with Angular and the web and code sharing between the two, will be doing that piece. I'll be working with Igor to get our situation a little bit less proof of concept and a little bit more ready to roll. <laughs> and I'll be talking about that. Um, so that is coming up. And, um, you know, we'll watch for us at conferences. Um, we'll be at a lot of different events, the VIEW road trip in, in particular. So we'll be at Paris and Barcelona. Uh, those are coming up actually really fast. <laughs> so maybe we'll see some folks there. Fantastic. All right. Thanks. And let's move on to our picks. Do you run your own freelance business? Or maybe you're thinking about picking up some business on the side. Well, then you need FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the quickest and easiest way to get invoices out to your clients. It's easy to use. It works anywhere, available from any device, uh, on the desktop, iPhone, iPad, Android, and all of your data is backed up and secure. And it makes it really easy to get organized and get paid. You'll be tracking time, logging expenses, and invoicing your clients in no time. You can also save time billing, freeing up several days per month to focus on the work that you love, and you get paid faster. FreshBooks customers are paid on average five days faster because there's a link on the invoice that says pay me now, and it's a great way to grow your business. Plus, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day trial. That's right, 30-day trial if you try them out. So go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. Once again, for a 30-day trial, go to gofreshbooks.com slash devchat and enter devchat in the how did you hear about us section. So Joe, would you like to start us off today? Yes, I have a very topical pick. On April 5th, 2019, the movie Shazam comes out. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yep. Uh, starring one of my favorite uh, actors, Zachary Levi, who was... Um, I can't. I'm Chuck. He played them in the show Chuck. Zachary Levi. It's about a, a boy who's given. It's a superhero movie. It's a, from the DC world. Um, a boy who becomes an adult superhero in times of need with a single magical word, Shazam. <laughs> Super excited for that. So that is my pick. The movie Shazam next year. I'm excited. I'll put it on the calendar. <laughs> All right, Divya. What are your picks? Okay, so I have one pick, which is uh, Mozilla released a, like, they, they had an article called Debugging Modern Web Applications, which was published, I think, this week, May 15th, and it was talking a little bit about how their Firefox has created a way for you to do source maps that actually points to your original code or the line in your original code. Um, and then it even allows you to show scope of where exactly that code, is, that snippet is in the context of like the rest of your app, which is really cool and awesome. Because most of the time I'm like, I know exactly what failed via source maps, but you, the line number doesn't always match the line number in your actual code base. So that is all. Beautiful. And Jen, what are your picks? Well, one of my picks is happening tonight, actually. So this may be too late for um, folks listening, but maybe it'll be streamed again. But on PBS.org, on American Masters, there's um, a movie called Bombshell, a Hedy Lamarr story. And um, I think this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to watching this. She's like this, she's this unbelievably beautiful lady who um, also happened to be one of the inventors of Wi-Fi so, and Bluetooth. So um, definitely worth a watch. I'm sure they'll, they'll you know, maybe post this you know, locally so that you can see it. Um, she also had kind of a crappy life, I think. She wasn't a very happy person. So it'd be interesting to see um, that movie. And my other one is by my ex-boss, uh, Burke Holland. And I believe Sarah Drasner is working on this. I'm trying to find the link. But it's a series that they did called VS Code Can Do That. I, I, and I'm, I'm 
dig through my links, but he's released um, a bunch of really cool videos about um, really interesting things you can do with Visual Studio Code. Um, it would be really helpful if I could find a link. They're funny too. Like they, they have a sense of humor. Oh yeah, he's he's yeah. he's. Wonderful. I'm just like I'm just not finding the link, but it's going to be released. I heard as a plural site course, so they're kind of co- calling them all together and it'll be released as plural sites. So that's really cool. Mm, that was cool. Mm-hmm. I'll have to check out the Hedy Lamar um, thing you were mentioning because I actually found out about her very recently, yeah. and she is incredibly inspirational. It's amazing. It's insane. She was an actress and did like experiments and like taught herself science and like various things on her own which yeah. is insane which is crazy and I, and I think she was really in the situation where she was too beautiful it was yes just, yeah. yeah people never took us seriously yeah it was rough so yeah. oh well <laughs> yeah i get that a lot too i know <laughs> you know i'm just like people don't even hear what i'm saying you know this is why i can only do a podcast <laughs> just like mesmer- because if people could actually see me oh it, right. it's it's bad. Tough for you, i know um, yeah it's tough for you so i, I really i really feel i i, I want to watch that too i feel like i'd relate <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> if you watch Blazing Saddles, the uh, the joke is Headley Lamar is the name of the of the sheriff, right? Yeah, yeah. Not Hedy Lamar. Oh, huh. remember that? <laughs> yeah, love that show. Yeah. All right, and then my picks today. I have two picks. Uh, one is cooking shows in general mm-hmm. as something to do when you are, are you kind of like need a break, but you also kind of want to keep coding. So it's something that where you can give yourself kind of a break, but you can still code. And something nice about like cooking shows, I don't mean like shows that show you how to cook. I can't do that. I don't know. With, with my brain, if they're actually giving me instructions and saying like, here's how you put a recipe together, uh, my mind just wants to fully focus on that. But if you do like competition shows or documentary shows, like uh, something I've been watching recently is Chef's Table, oh, uh, which is on Netflix. Yeah. And the ones where they're speaking a language that I don't understand uh, and they show subtitles. I can't do those while I'm coding because I don't speak like, I don't speak South Korean, for example. So uh, (laughs) that that doesn't work very well for me. But uh, the other ones, the ones that are in English are a language that I, that I can get by in. Then uh, those are, those are very, very good. And of course, if you've never seen like the Great British Bake Off or the Great British Baking Show is, is called in the U.S. uh, That's, uh, it's, it's like a warm, like a warm mug of like Tea. Hot chocolate or something. Yeah. yeah. Like with marshmallow in it in like audiovisual form. It's very wholesome. Yeah. And it's and not it, like people beating on each other like no. the US, you know? like Yeah, yeah. They're all like, Oh, I really liked what you made. Yeah, yeah. and when and when they when someone gets eliminated, they hug. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> Yeah, they obviously don't know how to do reality shows. The key to reality shows, not whatever is going on, it's getting people to yell and argue at each other. That's yeah, but the whole key to reality shows, apparently. Yes, yeah, chef. Yeah. So there's another cooking show. This is another English one uh, called the Great British Table, mm-hmm. and on that one, they have different regions of the UK come together and like c- compete first against like different people within each region. And then they compete against each other to like have a dish at this like super cool banquet that I would love to go to someday. So if we have any fans who are on the great <laughs> British table, please invite me to the banquet. That'd be awesome. Uh, but anyway, that's not going to happen. Somebody's hungry. That doesn't, happen, that doesn't exist. I'm sure no one on that show is listening right now, wow. but, uh, or cares. But anyway, uh, when they, when they have the, the group from uh, Wales, like all the Welsh people are really nice. And so it really like kills the competitive aspect. You know, cause you, you, can, you can see that they're being asked questions like, what do you think, like, what do you think is going to help you dominate everyone else? Uh, you know, and you hear them, all you hear is their answer. It's like, I don't think I can really like dominate everyone. Everyone else is very talented. And I just hope to, you know, show <laughs> off the, the food and the ingredients. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, and they're just like totally, totally not playing along with the competitive atmosphere. And it's fantastic. So the, the, the Welsh ones are a little bit boring, I have to say. But it, <laughs> apart from that, it's, it's pretty good. Was it, was it called a Great British menu, menu table? Menu? Great British menu, maybe? It might be the Great British menu. I don't know. I, I'm just looking at Great it. British menu or table? One of those. British menu. Oh, yeah. It's a BBC television series in which top British chefs compete for the chance to cook one course for a cor- four-course banquet. Oh, and those dishes looked look fantastic. Um, unfortunately, I'm usually snacking on like tortilla chips and salsa or something like that. 
<laughs> Neither of which are handmade, by the way. <laughs> see, I'd like to see this kind of show, but for Asia, you know? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Like, so, that would be interesting. I'm sorry, that would be, be great. They do have, I, I did watch, um, it, it was something about a fridge. I think it was a South Korean show where you you take a celebrity's fridge and then you uh, chefs have to take ingredients from the fridge and make them something delicious. <laughs> Uh, and I watched maybe like 20 minutes of that. I, I couldn't watch anymore because it, it felt like really, I don't know. It felt weird to me. It felt weird. <laughs> but I think there are probably like a lot of cultural things that I'm just not in tune with. So. Oh, it's like, please take care of my fridge. No, chef in my fridge. Chef in my fridge. That oh sounds likely. Gosh, that sounds it's weird. But anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's anyway, cool. my second pick, apart from cooking shows, is I would love... Uh, yeah, like we talked about, like, a, is it a clutch of foxes? Skulk. A skulk. A skulk of foxes. And there's a murder of crows. Yes. I would love to know what other strange names there are for groups of animals. And I do not want to know how they got those names. What I would prefer is if anyone has like a story that they'd like to make up about how these, these animals like got these names for their groups. I would love for you to tweet that to me. And then that can become my headcanon for like how that happens. And I will happily spread the lie that you made up. It sounds like a children's book waiting to Yeah, it does. Yeah, totally you know, does. a gaggle of geese. A cauldron of, is it a cauldron of bats? It's a children's book with murder. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder. Oh, well, that doesn't. Flamingo one is the best one, I think. The a what? Flamboyance of flamingos. A, a fl- it, really? Are you serious? Yeah. A flamboyance of flamingos. I don't think that's that a is thing. Fantastic. Yeah. Wait, really? Google it. You, you, you. Flamboyance <laughs> of flamingos. Oh, you're right. No, you're uh, is there one for humans? What are humans when you have just like a group of humans together? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> cool. We'll have to make something up for that. What's well, interesting as well is that <laughs> the things that people name or the names for young things, young animals, um, kits or right. cubs or, or or chicks. It's, it's interesting because we couldn't get a um, consensus on what to call a young fox. Chicks, I get though, because that's like a little chicken. A little chicken. So you yeah. just shorten the word. Yeah, yeah, but we I couldn't. I thought it was kit was the standard thing for fox. Is that not true? So apparently, it can be either a cub, a kit, or a pup. Isn't that weird? So because we were thinking, depending so, on what, uh, probably a locale. I don't know. What oh, okay. But um, we were thinking of doing like a kids game, a kids uh, group of View Vixens. So we call it View Vixens Cubs. Oh, you know, I don't know. It just sounds because if it's a View View Vixens Kits, it sounds like something we're going to like a maker fair. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. it does. Okay, so I have to, I want to have another pick here. This is totally related. Yeah, go ahead. That is, you can buy tame red, I think it's red foxes. Oh, domesticated red foxes from Russia. You have to get them from Russia. Yeah. Wait, and bread and is this bread. is are this like a legit a, thing or is this like yeah. semi illegal? These are, are they absolutely, exotic pets? Are they actual like pets though? In the they US? are pets. These are like completely domesticated. They they come from Russia, but yes, you, they're legal to have here. You have to do a bunch of paperwork, but they are totally legal to have here. They are an absolutely domesticated, but they are an actual fox. There's no breeding with dogs or anything like that. These are true foxes. They just know. took I mean, up some fox, foxes starting in the 60s and then they just selected for the most do, docile ones and domesticated foxes in like 20 years. And so now you can buy them. For, so I think we need to start uh, Patreon to get enough money to buy View Vixens a fox. I'm not sure about I like this idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I live in my house. <laughs> I, <can't. laughs> I also wonder, like, what's the line for domestication? Because like you could say that my, my cat has technically been bred for domestication. But you would not be able to tell. Uh, you know, he he can be he can be pretty pretty vicious sometimes. You have the most undomesticated domestic cat. But I, I think every cat every cat is like not really domesticated. They're hunters. They want to hunt. They you, yeah, we're, we're just like beeless non domesticus. <laughs> we haven't domesticated them. We've come to an agreement. Right. <laughs> I'll feed you, and you don't. Care. We've come to an understanding. You know. Oh, we, we've that's awesome. We've signed a truce. <laughs> There's actually an Instagram for like. Uh, are little like foxes that you can just follow because pe- people like own them and you could just walk like there's one that's like JB, J-A-B-C-E-C-C and it's like very cute foxes that you could just see pictures of. So I think it also has dogs, but... Yeah, there's Hourly Fox on Twitter. Oh yeah, Hourly Fox that's too. That's yeah. But uh, yeah, another pick, another pick on Insta would be Cat School. 
Have you tried taking I've a look? I've not seen it. No. That's it's cool. amazing. You can teach your cat to like jump through your arms. Oh my God. It's unbelievable. That is a pick. Like that like erases all my other picks. <laughs> I, I did I did train my cat to sit. Uh, he has good. to sit before he gets food. That's good. Wow. <laughs> it's a it's a dominance thing. Yeah. That's cool. That's cat cute. Cool. It's something else. <laughs> And jump like it reminds me of like um when people do like you know how there was a craze around like goat yoga and there's like cat yoga yeah and, like cat cafes yeah yeah cat cafes are, are a pretty cool thing i've never actually been to one me neither I, I, i've heard some people but, complain about like oh but like it, well, or wouldn't a cat cafe you know be bad for like you know health codes and stuff like that and it's like where do you live you live with cats if you live with cats and you are eating food what is the difference yeah it's yeah. true like you know there's going to be cat hair and everything like no matter what <laughs> like just live with it it hasn't killed you just like enjoy it equally at a cat cafe yeah yeah we don't have one in boston i don't think someday there's one i think the closest one to me is in ann arbor that's worth the drive then <laughs> there has to oh, be yeah. one in chicago there has to you know we are more likely so, so katie and i my wife are more likely to come visit you divya if there's yes. a cafe oh there is it's called the perfect roast <laughs> of course it is the perfect roost <laughs> the perfect roast cat fay <laughs> cat fay did they really do cat fay <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> it's a roast. Most people have had cats for a while. <laughs> Before you start making up puns like cat fay, like that's at least 10 years of cat. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. That is funny. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, we could probably go on forever talking about cats, yeah, but yes. I should probably wrap it up. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, you know, panel and Jen for, for joining us today. And thank you, listeners, for joining us today on Views on View. And we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more. <laughs>